This is our first fawn of the season. This one's still evil. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Oh, these stinky, poopy creatures pooping everywhere. But there's a reason why I bought this crack house. I might need to tape his legs again. Cringe, ah, uh, bing bong. Is that big owls? Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Urban Rescue Branch. Today, we're going to be moving these cringe, ah, uh, uh, birds out to the flight pen because they're finally old enough. And honestly, you guys, sorry, but this stuff might have imprinted on me a little bit. What are these little mushrooms in here? But this will be their little enclosure for the time being. What are you doing, you little goober? Let me let you out. Come on. When we got this little fella, he was just a precious little bean, and now he's ready to go back into the... Oh. This will be a lovely place for these little creatures to learn how to fly. I'm swapping out this little fella's pee pad in here. Every day I have to use rescue to clean this out. Pretty soon this little guy shouldn't need this incubator at all anymore, and we'll be able to put him with that other great horned owl. And this guy obviously does not need me to put anything into his mouth anymore. He can eat it right off this little pad here and I do that so he doesn't eat the towel. I don't want him grabbing and eating little strings from the towel. See, he actually makes me put it in his mouth. Uh, otherwise, he will not eat it. But it is a joy to do this every day. Precious little creatures. As you guys can see, I've been letting these mats get real nasty. It's mostly from the calcium. A little bit of it's from their poop, but I have to keep these pads here. I don't want these guys to not have good traction, especially this one who's recovering from splayed legs. I might need to tape his legs again just to make sure before we release him. So the first baby beaver that came in is finally drinking his bottle. All right, you guys, take a look at this. You guys are still peeing and pooping a lot, and now they're officially eating a little bit of cat food mixed in with their milk. And this guy is spicy, and I think will always hate me. Exactly what we want. He'll even bite me if I put my finger in there. But all right, everybody, I just cleaned their towels out again. Just use the Fox Valley milk replacer in here with a shaker ball. I shake it up real, real good with warm water. And after this, I'll mix in a tiny bit of that wet cat food, because we are slowly starting to wean these guys. That's it, at least for now. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and put this in the fridge. This one's still evil and spicy and tries to bite me, even though I bring them fresh milk multiple times a day. All right, everybody, I'm taking these guys out to their outdoor enclosure. This is their first time seeing the outdoors for a while. They're officially weaned and able to eat this food on their own. And we have a pigeon over there that can show them how to eat, and then we'll go ahead and release them. This little creature has been doing okay, but he could be doing better. This is Austin Wildlife Rescue. I've showed you guys this before, but there it is, you guys. They have the best setup that I've seen at least anywhere in a huge radius around here. And that just puts it into perspective on how much resources and time and money and effort go into these little animals. We sure do be getting a lot of these cringe uh, uh, creatures. And they team up with the Audubon Society to be able to do this. I'm here at the Starbucks in Temple. This is our first fawn of the season. This little guy is gonna be going into our pen. He was just born, it looks like. Look at this perfect little creature that weighs 2.55 kilograms. Now we know how much to try and feed him. He's probably dehydrated, so his first feeding will be Pedialyte. There he is, you guys. He's taking the bottle like a little champion. Boo-Boo's first bottle. All right, everybody. All of my creatures are in here in a line. These guys are weaning like champions, but I need to give this guy's bottle every four hours. Good morning, Boo-Boo. I will name this deer Boo-Boo, but better. That boy just annihilated his little ball ball. Or Boo-Boo, but native. All right, everybody. I'm taking this room and my sanity back, but just so you can all see one more time, look at all the different little creatures we have in here. We have one baby groundhog that has just finished weaning. Look at that little creature. Two baby gray foxes that are almost done weaning. They're still drinking water from a bowl. One little shlooboo from the wild. And Ian and Sky have a ton of experience with these guys, so I'm bringing them over to them right now. But he did just annihilate two of his bottles and we give them pure goat's milk. One little garbingo bop and one cringe ah uh -uh. Bomb. I just gave the armadillo baby away to Austin Wildlife Rehab. Because they have a bunch that are the same size and we don't need one little armadillo. And also, they're pretty tough, man. I had that thing for two weeks and I was tube feeding it four times a day. Uncle Ben doesn't have it in him to do all these creatures. Especially if other folks can do a better job. Look at this little fella. But Ian and Sky said they could help me take care of all the raptors in the other house now. But it's been fun rehabbing in my house for the last two weeks and I'm definitely not planning on stopping right now. But there's a reason why I bought this crack house in the first place and it's for rehabbing animals. I do not need these stinky, poopy creatures pooping everywhere. I also wanted to and still want to show you guys that this is what the majority of wildlife rehabbers in the state of Texas and around the U.S. do. Most of them don't actually fundraise or make money so they can do this. They usually just do it on their own dime. Majority of them don't even do it through an actual organization. And if you guys have a passion for this, you can do it too. With the right training and expertise and know-how. And the correct biosecurity precautions, which 
the majority of wildlife rehabbers do not adhere to. But the best rehabbers I've ever met, and I mean the best rehabbers I've ever met, be having kitchens with dead mice and rats and chicks lying around. But I think that's based, and those guys are locked in. The only problem is whenever it gets to be too much, it's hard to say. It's easy to get burnt out whenever you have everything right by where you live. And for me, I'd much rather prefer to keep as many things over here as possible. It's not too far of a walk from here, but this is why I built a house so close to our office because I knew that in the busy season I'd have to be really close to the animals to take care of them myself but we got a lot of these Karen and Kevin eggs that went bad here this is our meal prep area and Ian do you mind if I film you just kidding you guys Ian signed the release waiver which says that I can film him at any time day or night on his or my property but that's gonna be really great Good stuff for these little animals. Uh, you definitely need to wash your hands yeah. after that one. Oh, dude, no. But right now, we're looking through all these enclosures to see which possums are big enough and old enough to be released. Some of them have been escaping anyways, so we definitely had some soft releases here on the property. Now I'm going to take this cringe ah uh, boy and put him in the other enclosure. And one day, he will be big enough to eat this wild boo-boo. And look at this, you guys. He just coughed up an owl pellet. I'm going to introduce these two together. The game wardens and a local school have been asking me for these out pellets so that they can teach kids with them. But when they asked me that, I said, bro, we only have one little baby Eastern Screech Owl. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try and introduce these together. My uh, rehabber raptor mentor said that it shouldn't be a problem to introduce two of the same species, even if they're a bit of a different size. This should ultimately help them and keep them from imprinting on me. And if we start to see them being cringe or something like that, we can just go ahead and separate them and put one over here. Boo Boo, if you guys remember, was a little axis deer, which is a non-native ungulate here in Texas. And this is a white-tailed deer. This is actually the first white-tailed deer that we've ever rehabbed here at the Urban Rescue Ranch. The first of very many this summer, I assume, because we're the only rehabbers in between Dallas and Austin that can take these guys in. She is still going. And you can use a paper towel or whatever, or a wet washcloth, but I think this is just a much better method, right? Yeah, just using your hands and getting your hands dirty. Look how clean this place is. Look at this, you guys. We're finally in actual little wildlife rehab with all these. Look at these little shelves that Nathan Mateo from Matei Farms made. How about you guys all go over to the Nathan Matei Farms YouTube channel and thank him for putting all of these nice little cabinets and shelves in. When this little guy came in, I'll show you a little picture. He was just a little white fluff ball. Now he's a big strong man eating whole baby chicks. And the time has come to finally move these little creatures into here because I don't need all of these animals in my house anymore, especially now that we know these guys are eating twice a day on their own. Now we're meal prepping for all the raptors, the other creatures out there. Look, you guys, it's my dog, Boo Boo. I was wondering why the gate isn't closing and there's this snail that's just sitting on the gate opener, keeping it from opening or closing. Nasty little fella. All right, everybody, time for this cringe ah uh, baby deer to eat for the fifth time today. He is eating like a champ. If you're latrining these guys, you have to make sure they're getting all their poop and pee out. And if you're feeding them, you have to latrine them at the same time. I bring the guy out there to pee and poop because it's a little bit less nasty than doing it inside. But it's not that hard to raise a baby deer. We've raised dozens on the channel. Even though this is the first white-tailed deer, you just use a paper towel or you can use your hands. It's probably better if you wear gloves like Sky did just a second ago. That's all there is to it, you guys. It's not that hard to feed a baby deer. You can use unimilk or the raw goat's milk. I found that the raw goat's milk works a little bit better. Now this little goober is a lot less emaciated and I can feel that his tummy is full. Precious little creature. I'm gonna go ahead and feed him again in four or five hours. I am trying to come up the stairs to be near me. For the time being, especially because he's only like three or four days old, it's okay if we coddle him and be nice. So this is what his mama would be doing. She would be licking on him and going and it's good to let him walk around. But most of the day, these guys just hang out in the woods under a nice shady tree all day anyway. Especially when they're this tiny and young. The first of many white-tailed deer that we will be getting this year. And I really hope this little fella makes it for the long haul so we can release him. But regardless, I can't get too attached because unlike Boo Boo, this little fella does have to go back to the wild. The beautiful thing about being a wildlife rehabber is that we get to enjoy these creatures while they're here and love on them and nurture them when they need it. We also have to have the ability 
ability to stop nurturing them and loving on them when they don't, which will probably be in a few weeks. You guys, look at this. He just went and sat under this tree. This is what they do at this age, you guys. That's why if you see one hanging out under a tree on your property, it probably doesn't need help. Unless it's crying or emaciated, you shouldn't take it into a wildlife rehabber. Good night, boo-boo number one. All right, everybody, I'm here, and it's time for the nighttime feedings. It's 10 p.m., and little Shlubu, who's in this cringe uh, uh, dog kennel, isn't this funny? I definitely have a way better setup that I could make, but I think it's just so cute to put him in here. <laughs> Come on out, Shlubu. It's a lovely evening here at the Urban Rescue Branch. Everything is as it should be here on the farm. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this boy his bobo. He sure does love that bobo, don't you, new better boo-boo? I have to say that quietly because other boo-boo is over there right behind that vehicle. And the other boo-boo is always listening. Oh, I'm getting bit by a mosquito. Yeah. He has no idea that I've completely replaced him with this newer, better female version that's native. These guys are a lot more reasonable and now they finally have a nest mate again. Even though this guy is a lot bigger than this other one. Hawkerton does not like me at all whatsoever. In fact, he won't even eat this from my hand if I hold it up to his face. Look at this. But as you can see, he's clearly not imprinted on me at all. I'll just leave this on a plate for him. All right, everybody. As a part of the weaning process for these creatures, I am now feeding them more cat food than I am milk. I also don't want these guys to be drinking any more of my precious milk replacer because that stuff is expensive. And look at this boo-boo. Why he nibbling on that blanket? All these guys are officially at the point where they're a little too big to be in these cute little things, although they can sleep in them for tonight. But if I grab this one and go <laughs> and then move him away, this one can eat as much as he wants. <laughs> It's like the seven foxes we had last year. All we need to do is just scream and bang pots and pans until they're scared of us. But we don't need to do that till they're old. And we also got these two little creatures and they are both too small for me to take care of right now. Tomorrow they're gonna be going to All Things Wild because All Things Wild has a lot more awesome based mother pilled people. And they can take care of these little creatures a lot better than I can, especially when I have all these things I'm taking care of by myself most of the time. And even late at night, Garbanzo Beans is just trying to get in here so he can touch me. But that's it for now, you guys. And this was my first time ever editing on a computer. And it sucked. I am never doing this again. But I love you guys. I appreciate you. Boo-boo's doing well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Ah!